Hey, welcome to New Hope Underground. This is actually take two. <laughs> but uh, Jonathan Brocious is here. Again. And we're doing a series a overview. <laughs> you were here the first time, too. I was. I was Just here for a few folk minutes tries. ago when we figured out we weren't recording anything. Oh my gosh, that was funny. How long were we into that? I don't know. Podcast? We talked for like 15 we minutes. We had like 15 <laughs> minutes of pure gold vanished into the air. You know what it is, is? This podcast board is red when it's recording. Mm-hmm. And green when it's not. Usually yes. it's the opposite, isn't it? Like if you think about green would be uh, going and it's red stopping, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I Every time I've ever been in around anything that's recording, it's always a red light blinking at me. I don't know. I'm but sorry. I'm not helping I, you out at all, Darren. I tell you what, this whole... You should just feel really bad about yourself. I do. I really do. <laughs> and this whole story sums up exactly what the series overview is all about. Uh, yes. So, futility, meaninglessness, yes. vanity, just all that effort just poof, gone. This is our Christmas series, believe it or not. And Jonathan's going to tell oh you the gosh. name of our Christmas series we're going to be talking about. All right, is. guys. You guys ready for the best Christmas series of your life? This is the best <laughs> idea you've ever heard. Hang on. We have this Christmas series. And out of the brains of myself and Darren and Tyler Sturkey, now, in van put seat belts on your ears guys this is so good it's going for a ride here's the title of the series it's going to change your life really <laughs> we did we have this christmas series we decided to name it it's the most meaningless time of the year yes <laughs> <laughs> and no one was in the meeting to tell us it was a bad idea no. and so we went for it but i'm pumped actually Dan. yeah because here's can i talked about this a little bit on the sermon but and, and the last time we recorded this, <laughs> it, well, a few minutes ago. So I, I love the Christmas story. I love the story of Mary and Joseph and the angels and the shepherds. It is a beautiful story. It is the story that our Savior chose to use to bring himself to our world. Mm-hmm. I love that story. But on the practical side, there is the challenge, and you've faced this because you've been a pastor for way longer than I have, Okay, it's Christmas again, Darren. What are you going to get up on the stage and teach about this story that you yeah. haven't already said? Like, you've yeah. already used all 17 of your really good ideas in the previous 17 <laughs> Christmases. Yeah. So what are we going to do now for Christmas number 18 that's so different? And and you, you were like, hey, I know. No one's ever done this. <laughs> so I was like, it's just half as a joke. <laughs> Why don't we use Ecclesiastes during our Christmas <laughs> series? And then someone said, yeah, we could call it the most meaningless time of the year. Because for those of you that don't know, like the word meaninglessness or futility yeah. or vanity is repeated a zillion times in the book of Ecclesiastes. Because that's the... What's the Hebrew word? Hevel. 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 It's such a great word. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's, just uh, it's the main theme of the book of Ecclesiastes. So it's the most meaningful time. Meaningless. 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 Oh, man, 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 messed it up. I know. You can't. It's the I, most meaningless time of the year. I, I wish I had enough musical talent to like record that song with that <laughs> and just play it and make it, you know, one of those earworms people can't get rid of. Anyway, so we are launching well, well, into this welcome series. Welcome to the brain of Jonathan Brocious. I know. It's all over the place. It's bad. So I'm excited about this series of Ecclesiastes because Ecclesiastes is one of my favorite books of the Bible. I was reading, I I like it too. I was watching some Bible project stuff and you know, the book of Proverbs, they, uh, how I can't, the word just slipped my mind where you take an idea and make it, give it almost like person like characteristics, anthropomorphize or something like that. Yes. So what really big word anyway, basically they take the idea of wisdom and portray it as a young woman. Mm. And it's Mm. contrasted with this silly, foolish lady named folly. And you're constantly trying to figure out which which woman you're going to pursue and chase after, right? Well, Ecclesiastes, the Bible project said, kind of takes the persona of a jaded 50, 60 year old critic <laughs> that's kind of lived life, right. experienced both wisdom and folly, and is just kind of like, oh yeah, here's what I really think. And a little hint for you, it's all stupid. Yeah. And it's really it's, it's fascinating. The, it's the grouchy read. old man book. Yes, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right, Darren. And we're going to do that for Christmas. Yeah. It's like Scrooge over <laughs> and over and over again. All four weeks. So please keep coming back. Merry Christmas. It's all meaningless. <laughs> no, it's awesome. I think that I love Ecclesiastes because I think it uh, really speaks to a lot of things. People feel. Today than, yeah, what we feel and also just today more than we think it does. Every time I think of going through the book, you know, you had mentioned earlier about how there are different themes in Ecclesiastes. I mean, we're not yeah. even going to get into necessarily in the right. sermon series, but you want to talk about a couple so, of those? So, yeah. Things? So the first week of the series, I kind of just introduced the book of Ecclesiastes. Um, there's one 
let, let's put a thumbnail in that. Cause I, there's one topic I want to come back to you on that in the introduction. And then there's, um, three different themes, major themes that we saw in Ecclesiastes that honestly really apply to Christmas super well, which is obviously possessions. Ecclesiastes talks about that a lot. And that's, I mean, our culture makes Christmas all about that all the time. Right. Um, then there's pleasure. That's the word Ecclesiastes uses. Our culture steers away from that word sometimes, but I say this in the message, think about the Christmas songs. It's all about chestnuts roasting over an open fire. It's all about the taste of grandma's pie. It's all like Mariah Carey is trying to be the queen of Christmas for all I want for Christmas is you like that romance and kissing under a mistletoe. And so Hallmark shows, oh, well, Hallmark shows, are, they kind of, <laughs> they kind of get, they sneak on you sometimes. Darren. Yeah. I I'm, I'm a sucker for a Hallmark show, maybe one or two every year. You know, I grew up in a house of all boys. We never watched the Hallmark channel ever. <laughs> Didn't even really know what it was. Yeah. And now my I wife, have, my wife loves the Hallmark Christmas. shows. <laughs> I can, I can nail them for you. I love them, but I make fun of them the well, entire I, time. Too. You and I could write one. You could right write now. a Let's script. Let's do it. Right you want to do it right yeah. now? No, I don't know if we have time, but, <laughs> So, but there's a decoy boyfriend. You got to watch out for that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got to watch yeah. out for the decoy guy, yeah. but then fall for the guy. He's usually wearing a vest. Yeah. Uh, maybe do, he usually does something with his hands. It, only because he gave up the big city job. Right. In order to go out and do something with his And hands. because he has so many family ties to the small town that yes. you all grew up in together. And he's probably saving the town at the same time. Exactly. But nobody knows it. He's incredibly sort of... rich, but he doesn't live that way. He usually drives right. an old beat up pickup truck. Right. Yes. Never. Has a dog. Uh, yes, of course. Never a cat. Never because a cat. you can't trust guys with cats. No. <laughs> anyway. So the no. Hallmark show, those, yeah. they're sneaky sometimes. Because usually the main character, the protagonist... The fiction writer that's busy with the magazine in New York City and has to get back to her job. You know the yeah, person I'm talking yes, about. Exactly. Okay, right. So she... And can't make time for Christmas, but is right, forced to. Right, but she's always all about the possessions usually. Yes. And so she's falling for the first two traps that we already discussed in the book of Ecclesiastes. And Hallmark is like, no, 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 sweetheart. That's not what Christmas is about. Christmas is all about the people. And you always, I mean, it's not just the Hallmark. Like Tim Allen's The Santa Claus is all about that. The oh, Grinch yeah. is all about that. He oh, thinks yeah. if he takes out everybody's presents, then Christmas is gone. Yeah. And then he finds out at the end, no, it's about people and relationships. You know, yeah. and so Hallmark. I was actually going to kind of hit a little bit of this when we get into my sermon on. Oh, no, I I'm have stealing your thunder. No, no, that's okay. So I'm gonna, I had a different idea, a different movie idea, but. Oh, cool. Well, I won't. Yeah. But, I won't. But, but you're right. No, no. Keep talking. So many about of these, it. so many of these movies kind yeah. of do the, oh no. And you follow that character arc over and over and over again, where they're yeah. all about the possessions and then they find out, no, it's about the people. But then Ecclesiastes is kind of over here going. Oh, so none of you all have ever been hurt by people before? Yeah. And you're kind of sitting there. You're it's like, not about the people either. Oh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. And so, uh, man, Ecclesiastes just does such a good job of being that old grouchy guy in the corner. So, so we're talking about kind of overall view is what you're going to get. Yep, that's what I'm going to hit. Ecclesiastes, and we're going to talk about possessions, and we're going to talk about pleasure pleasure and people. And people. But I think the thing the thing is, when I, th when I read through Ecclesiastes, the word that, another P word that comes to mind is pursuit. Mm. You know, it's like you're pursuing all these things. And I just kind of view our culture that way. If you think about it, especially Christmas time actually makes sense. Yeah. Because there's like this pursuit of what is good, just like the Hallmark they were talking about. Kind of, kind of like when you go to an inner city and you, you talk to them about their soup kitchens and when they need help the most or when they don't have help, it's, right. oh, they always have the most help during when? Christmas time. Christmas time. Yeah. I don't know if it's We plan on that with our church too. The most giving comes in during yeah. Christmas time. Yeah. Because of taxes. Well, yeah. <laughs> There's that. Ecclesiastes talks about that too. That's a, that's a sidebar that I don't think we even have time to get into in our sermon series. But man, the role of government and justice. Yeah. I feel like Ecclesiastes is watching our political system <laughs> and writing just the scathing commentary of everything that's going on in our culture and in our government and in our system. And I'm like, this was written thousands of years before our forefathers even thought of the idea of the United States of America. You mean sin and corruption is an old thing? It's almost like humankind <laughs> has not changed at all over th like millennia. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's just amazing. And so I love my encouragement. I'm sorry, I'm derailing off of a topic you had there, but no, my, right. my, I really want our people to read the book of Ecclesiastes during this Christmas time, because I think it's just going to be eye opening. You read the book of Ecclesiastes, read it a few times. It's 12 chapters long. You could read one, two chapters a day, and you'd be through it multiple times. 
before Christmas even gets here. And it's not just depressing. It doesn't leave you hanging. No, 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 it, it actually doesn't. gives us some resolution. Yeah. And I talk about some of that in my, in my mm-hmm. first message is some of the hope that you can find in the book of Ecclesiastes that I think actually gives you a deeper hope to hang on to. But you're just going to be blown away because I feel like Christmas just takes our culture and just turns the volume way, 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 way up. There you go. It's stuff yeah. that's already there in our culture. Yeah. Our culture's already I think about. It's almost like a. It's almost like a community evaluation of our own selves at Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah, and we don't want to look at it too hard, so we just go, 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 make it crazy, make it big. You yeah. know? I mean, we still are going to be the biggest consumers ever, but <laughs> right. but at the right. same time, there's just something knowing in the back of our minds. Like what is Christmas really about? Mm-hmm. And I also, I also think it's because of the end of the year too. It's the most meaningless time of the year for sure. It can be. <laughs> no. So, and one thing that I, uh, I could really dive in deep with you on, and I touched on it briefly in my introduction message is Ecclesiastes is poetry and it's ancient near Eastern poetry, mm-hmm. which means it's completely different than roses are red, violets are blue type of poetry that we're familiar with where things have to rhyme. You're not kidding. Instead, it's the way they do it. And I like, this was a game changer for me as far as reading the Bible and understanding it. When I think it was the Bible project that introduced me to this idea, which quick plug Bibleproject.com. If you've never been there, good stuff. Oh my gosh. They got an app too. They got an app. They've got mm-hmm. college level courses on there. I've taken a couple of those and it was a game change. It was huge. But anyway, one of the things that I learned was that with poetry like this, you're reading it and to our Western ears. It just sounds like super repetitive. Like, why are we talking about this again? Like we've talked about this seven times already. Like yeah. you just repeated that line three times. What are we even doing? And that's because we are very used to our thought is based on like Greek philosophy. And that's what really birthed, an awful lot of how our schools and colleges and all of these things teach is it's like a train leaving a station. I'm going to start here. I'm going to keep adding cars onto it and mm-hmm. we're going to take you on a journey until we get to our final destination. Mm-hmm. And once we get there, Hey, let's all throw a party. Now you understand my point. You've gotten my conclusion, whatever. Cool. We're done with the conversation. Now let's move on to another idea. It's not the way they worked at all. And I, and once you kind of catch on to what they're going, what they're doing, you can gain so much more depth and so much more nuance. And I think it's actually a much more thorough way of discussing ideas and talking about topics where they, they take an approach to it. It's not deductive. It's not like boom, boom, boom. And then that's the right word. It's like a formulaic kind of approach. It's not, it's not. In fact, uh, this is a crude analogy. I think of it as like a toilet bowl. Like we're just going to go around it. Hey, let's go around again. Like, hey, we've thoroughly examined this from all perspectives. We've done a 360 degree evaluation on this topic or this idea. We have teased out every nuance. And we're going you know what we're gonna back up? We're gonna do it again. And that's why that's why I want people to read Ecclesiastes multiple times, because you get through it and you're like, okay. But by the time you get to the end, you have perspective that you didn't have when you started. And so you need to start over again because you're gonna read those first few lines of poetry differently. Yeah. And every time you just unearth another layer of the onion and uh, I'm mixing so many analogies and metaphors yeah, right now. It's not even and toilets and, and onions and <laughs> digging things, but, <laughs> but you're getting the idea of what I want you to do. Read yeah. it over and over again. And you're going to find stuff in Ecclesiastes. So we, as we, as a teaching team, we like to teach progressively through a book of the Bible. And with Ecclesiastes, we looked at it and we're going, we can't because you want to talk about, people or pleasure or possessions. Well, it's talked about in chapter two and then it's talked about again in chapter seven and then it's talked about again in chapter 11 right. and each time it's, it's a, lo- a slightly different take on that onion. And so how are we going to make this make sense to our people today? So that's why we went with the theme idea for the next four weeks. Right. Um, but I want people to experience that for themselves. And the only way to do that is just dig into the Bible and read it for themselves. Well, I think anybody that looks and reads Ecclesiastes, if you read it and go, Oh, none of those, none of those uh, topics that are in there are relevant for today. Then you're just lost. man. <laughs> you just don't know how to read. <laughs> Delusional is a yeah. better way of thinking about that. Cause exactly. I mean, it's every, it's money, it's people, it's relationships, it's government, it's work. It's everything we pursue. It's family. I mean, yeah. it's all of it. All of it's in there. All, yeah. Uh, alcohol. It's almost like there's nothing new. And yeah. it's not love, sex. I mean, that's in there too. All of it, all of it is in there. 
Mm -hmm. So I am excited for the journey that's in front of our people. And I'm inviting you to to take a step into that journey of Ecclesiastes. It's going to challenge you because you're used to reading the Bible and going, oh, I have bad things. Bible gives me answer. Now I have hope. You know, you're used to kind of that formula. I have sin, I have hurt, I have trauma, I have anger, I have grief. Whatever the thing is, we bring our problems before God and through the Bible, through Jesus Christ, we find answers, we find mercy, we find forgiveness, we find love. We find meaning. We, and we find meaning, and so then we can move forward. Yeah. Ecclesiastes, you're going to read it and you're just feeling like this guy's just doubling down on how meaningless it all really is. And but there's some neat stuff in there that you start to see the hand of God working through it. No, that's really good. Well, thanks for bringing the most meaningless time of the year. Hey, us. you're welcome, man. <laughs> you can count on me to spoil any party. I am ready to go right now. It's the most meaningless time of the year. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> hey, yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, that series will continue through December. Yes, and, all the way up uh, to our Christmas Eve service. And I'm real excited about the fact we have a Christmas Eve service yep. here at New Hope at all three of our campuses off Christmas Eve services on that Sunday. Mm-hmm. No Sunday morning yep. services. Getting the schedule figured out is difficult right now yeah. for everybody, but we got to advertise it everywhere. And then we're all coming together right. on December 31st right? Uh, for at uh, Effingham Performance Center. That's going to be an awesome time. Just all of us together. Well, we actually did that last year. It was one of the best services I felt like we did all year was when all three of our campuses got together and just celebrated what God has done and prayed for the next year. Powerful stuff. So I'm excited to do that again with everybody at the EPC December 31st. By the way, we did have the good sense not to continue the Ecclesiastes series into the the Christmas Eve service. So invite your family and friends out to our candlelight Christmas Eve service. We're not going to be bah humbugging all over that. All the meaningless stuff. So that on Christmas Eve, we'll we'll, we'll reveal the meaning. Right. (laughs) It'll be good. It'll be good. Thanks everybody. So let's have a Merry Christmas and uh, enjoy the most meaningless time of the year.